When all of the other whalers had come into port, this woman had stood there and waited, for they travelled in company one with another to make sure that those French privateers couldn't steal the goods that they'd worked so hard for. But her husband's ship had not returned. It was brightly painted, so there was no mistake. She and her children stood by the quayside and waited all through the day and the next day and the day after that. And the days had turned into the weeks and the weeks had turned into the months and another season had been and gone and the ship had not returned. Now it was 18 months. No ship had ever been beset for longer than a year so she only thought the worst. With no money coming in from her husband, she'd had to find work. And the work that she'd found had been in the rope factory. And it often brought a smile to her face when she would treat the rope with the whale oil and think that it was whale oil just like this, that her husband would have brought back from the sea that she was using now. And to think that it had been in his hands or he'd had a hand in getting it to the shore, would make her smile. She'd seen 30 summers, but she looked older. Her hair was short and straight and greasy and hung down, not over her eyes. She'd become stronger, stronger she'd made more rope. Barefooted she would pull at the rope and she would make rope for all different kinds of industries. She would make the rope that would be attached to the harpoons that the linesman would have in the whale boats that when he threw the harpoon it would draw out a hundred, a hundred yards or more strong ropes but now she was thinking of what she could do to try and find a husband what could she do? these whaler men they might have been as strong as oxen but they were as superstitious as children she would never she would never get the chance to go on a, on a whalerman, to go out to try and find a husband, to go over to the Davis Straits or over to Greenland. But what could she do? Now, one cold, wet winter's midday, when it was foggy, she could see bright, brightly coloured boats and ships and whalers all in the quayside, and she wondered if she could get a passage on one of those boats for rich people would come down to the quayside where there was the stench of fish, fish oil, where there was the stench of the gutted fish, but it was where she made her ropes. Now, she loved to go skipping with her own children, skipping in the back lanes, and she couldn't use their heavy, hard hawser ropes. She made fine ropes, and the rich people would come down in amongst all of the stench, and they would take these ropes and they would pay her well. More money than she'd seen in three weeks for just one rope with a spinning spindle at, one, at each end. And she kept the money. She kept the money and thought that she could buy a passage uh, to travel on one of the Greenland whalers to where she thought her husband would be. But how could she get on board if she was a woman? She looked. The seawater was lapping against the, the side of the ships and the boats were bashing one against another and there were floats in between the boats to stop them from breaking one. And I'll tell you this, she thought that if a boat, as it changed owners, could change its colours, then she could change the way that she looked. Oh, her shoulders were broad and her hands were hard and heavy and her arms were long and strong. She thought that she could sell her father's harpoon. And with the money that she'd made from the skipping ropes, then she would be able to buy a, a, a passage to the Greenland whale fisheries to see if she could find a husband. She adored him. She adored him and she wanted to see him or at least know where he was. She reached among her father's things his knives, his, 
his harpoons. Now the harpoons were made from old nails and some said that they were the best harpoons, the old harpoons. Stronger and more flexible. But she wondered. She wondered as she wandered past the great blubber pots where they would boil the blubber twice in 24 hours. A smell that would make strong men weak and bring a brave man to his knees. She knew it was cold. And if it was cold, then she would be able to go up in the crow's nest with a scarf about her mouth and a hat upon her head and all of her oilskins about her. Then she could have been a baboon for all that anyone would know dressed under all of those layers. And she stood there in line to sign up to a ship for, <laughs> for with the French wars they were short of men. Men had been enlisted so that they would help to defeat Napoleon. And no one even suspected that she was a woman. They might have suspected that she was always the first one to say that she would go up into the crow's nest. That she would see if she could get a sighting of a whale. And she would go down and sleep while the others were working and rise while the other men were away. And no one suspected for a moment. She was good. She shouted and screamed and yelled. On this, her mission to rescue her husband. She screamed when she could see a whale, when she could see it spout. The other men would shout up to her, for she wouldn't come down when the whaling boats had gone out. She would wait until they were all asleep and she would lie down, wrapped up, blanket up to her nose, hat still upon her head, so that no one would tell just who she was. Seasickness would grab at her belly and her guts. But one day she screamed when she could see a spout of a school of whales. And she forgot for a moment as all of the body parts cascaded down onto the timber of the deck. She stood there and perhaps it was the wind or perhaps it was excitement because she knew that this was an area where her husband had been out whaling. But a hat slipped and a scarf exposed the fact that her skin was as soft as a baby's. The men might have been excited that they had caught many whales and they wouldn't be going back into harbour empty. But they would look at her. Things would be muttered, for now that she was found to be a woman, there was no way that she could hide it. She didn't pull the scarf so high up to her nose. She didn't keep the hat so far over her brow. And the men would mutter that she was a jinx, a jinx to the ship. And they wouldn't let her up into the crow's nest, even though she had done so much good work. And it was as a boy stood in the crow's nest, his eyes became heavy and he did not see the iceberg until it was too late. The boat went down with everyone on board, all of the blubber in the barrels, for whoever picked it up and found it, it became theirs. But she was joined, joined by a husband for he too, he too would drown beneath the cold, dark, icy waters of Greenland. And it was only in that place that the, the, they were joined. They were joined in death in the Greenland whale fisheries. <laughs>